Candlestick trading is the most common and the most easy to understand form of trading that there is today. But are you getting the most out of what the candlesticks are showing you and are you using them in the best way? Come on, let's explore. Hi folks, now today we're going to be looking at the all important Japanese candlestick charts and why if you understand what they're showing you can make your life a whole lot easier as a trader. Now not only do they give you a possible insight into what prices may be doing next, but they can also be used to define the exact rules of entry and exits. And I found over the years many aspiring traders struggle with just that. So having some defined rules of entry based on candlestick patterns can really help the aspiring trader. Now before I continue, let me first remind you that I now stream live on Facebook every Monday at 2 p.m. London time so you can watch me put all my teachings into a live trading environment. Now just follow the link above and you'll be getting straight in there for next Monday. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel here at YouTube if you don't already do so and click that little bell icon in that way you're going to get an alert the moment I release my next video. Okay let's get straight into it. Okay so before we get into the specifics of the candlestick chart and the patterns that are thrown up, I want to explain to you the three different chart types that traders use when they're trading the markets. Basically you've got the line chart, the bar chart and of course the candlestick chart. Now as with any chart you normally have the time on the horizontal axis and price is on the vertical axis, same with our trading charts. Here you can see the line chart. Now the line chart consists of a single line and the single line is plotted by looking at the closing price in a particular time period, be it a five minute time period or an hourly or weekly or so forth. So it ignores the price extremes, the highs and the lows in that particular time period. It only focuses on the closing price. Very powerful if you use these looking for key turning points, especially on the higher time, time frames like the daily and the weekly. Then you've got the bar chart. Now the bar chart shows you a bit more information than the line chart. It shows you where it opened, it shows you where it closed, you get to see a picture of where the market is going. It doesn't show you as much as the candlestick chart, but it shows you slightly more than the line chart. It shows you price extremes, highs and lows and so forth. I find that a little bit hard sometimes to actually predict trend by looking at that, um, but of course that is a matter of preference. Then of course you've got the all important candlestick chart. This shows us much more information when you plot these candles together against each other, they can really be quite powerful in predicting the future price movement. Let's have a look at them now in more detail. Okay, so as we know, markets are moved by human behavior. Buyers move the market up and sellers move the market down. Now the candlestick chart shows us basically who is winning the battle in a particular time period. Are the buyers more in control or are the sellers more in control? And the candlestick chart shows us a good visualization of just that. Now a candlestick chart is typically colored blue or sometimes green if the buyers have control. If the market opens down here and then moves all the way back up and closes here, that basically means the buyers were in control. So if the market closes higher than where it opened, the candle will be colored blue. An example here, if the market opened up here and then trades down because the sellers have control and closes down here, typically the candle will be colored red. So it closes lower than where it opened. Now also on a candlestick chart, you, show, you have these what are known as shadows or wicks. It shows you where price went to in that particular time period. So for example here, the market would have opened, traded down to possibly down here, and then right back up, buyers took control. So buyers are winning this particular candle up to a high up here. And then some sellers come in and it closes back down here. So this is a bullish candle. And exactly the same on the other candle here, the reverse. Market opens here, potentially trades up a little bit and then trades down. The sellers have control, takes it down to this new low down here then some buyers come in and it closes here. The sellers won that particular candle. Sellers were more prevalent than the buyers in that particular time period. So a candlestick chart shows you the open, the close, the high, and indeed the low. So lots of information going on on one particular candle. Now looking at a particular candle on its own 
isn't the best way to do it. You need to be looking at these candles in conjunction with other candles surrounding it and also at key levels, key levels of support and resistance. And when you match these together, it can give you a very good indication of where price may go in the future. It can also give you a good entry and exit levels as I previously discussed. Let me explore. Okay, so these are the main patterns that we look at in our trading. Certainly the ones that we look at in the strategies that we trade live every day in our trading. Very simple to understand. Let me briefly explain exactly what they're showing you. So here you've got a bullish engulfing pattern. This basically means that the candle to the right fully engulfs the candle to the left. So here the market opened up here, went to this high, traded back down to this low, closed down here, puts in this candle here, this bearish candle. Now the next candle opens here and fully trades down, but then fully engulfs the previous candle. This is a bullish candle. This indicates that the market is going to go up and move to the upside. Now we look for these at key turning points, at key levels of support and resistance. If you see one of these coming in at a support zone, that is a good high probability that that is going to be leading to a move to the upside. And as I said, you can use these candlesticks for entries and exits. So typically your strategy, in fact, one of the strategies we use, we'll look at this precisely this way, we will look to enter at a break above this particular high of this candle. And our stop could be either halfway down the bullish candle, or indeed could be a few pips below the base of this. So it leads nothing to the imagination. You've got some defined rules. Enter at the break of the high with a stop at the break of the low. Now we've got the bearish engulfer, exactly the same, but in the opposite direction. Here you've got a bullish candle, but then the candle to the right fully engulfs this and closes lower, fully engulfing the previous candle. This is a bearish candle looking for a move to the low side. When you see a bearish engulfer at a key level of resistance up here, for example, this gives you a high probability that this market is going to trade down. And as I say, you have defined rules of entry as well with your strategy. You could enter at the break of this low of the engulfing candle, or you could have, and you can have your stop at above the high of the engulfing candle as well. You may have a strategy that uses 50% of that candle. But again, you've got some defined rules that you can lock into there. A very powerful turning point, the bearish engulfer at key levels of resistance. Then you've got the hammer candles. You've got the inverted hammer and the hammer candle. Okay, basically this shows you that the sellers were in control. Markets opened here, it moved up, but then closed right the way down. So it opens here, closes here, market moves up, and then the sellers take control and they push price back down for a lower close than where it opened. This is a very bearish candle. This is a rejection candle. It's rejecting a level up here, this could indicate a move to the low side. A very simple candlestick pattern that can be very, very powerful in picking turning points. You can also use this inverted hammer with the trend as well. If the market is trending down and you see one of these hammer candles come in, well, i.e. a break higher, but then shows us back down again, that indicates that the buyers basically ran out of steam, the sellers took control and continuing on down with the trend. Exact reverse for the hammer candle. This is here where the buyers took control. So the market opens here, trades all the way down. So the sellers have control. Then the buyers come back in, take control and push the market higher again. This is a blue hammer candle. It's a bullish hammer candle. It's showing you that the buyers are in control and the price down here was rejected. This level of support is now being respected and of course, prices took off in the northerly direction. A very bullish candle. can be used to pick turning points in a downtrend. If you see this at the bottom of a downtrend, then this could indicate that the move is now going to be up. It also is very good in the, in, the, in the trending markets. If you see a market that's trending up, and then you see one of these candles come in, a break lower, maybe the sellers have got control, but then closes up again, this indicates that the market wants to continue in that northerly direction. A very, very powerful candlestick pattern um, when you take into consideration support and resistance with trend and counter trend. Then you've got the old famous doji. Now the doji 
represents an area of indecision. Who won control of that particular time period? Was it the bulls, was it the buyers, or was it the sellers? Well, clearly, neither won control is an area of indecision. Indecision basically means the market is undecided where it's gonna go. So looking at a doji on its own basically is not really the best way to play a doji. The best way to play a doji is looking at the next candle afterwards, the next couple of candles to see what price is actually doing. Mark is in undecided mode. The next couple of candles could be very crucial in terms of where the market might go again. So a doji is again a very, very powerful candle showing you something maybe is about to happen. If you see a number of these dojis and then a break higher, and that indicates the market wants to push higher. If you see a number of these dojis and then a break lower, then it indicates a potential rollback and the market wants to trade lower. Let's look at these now in a bit more detail. Okay, so here we see a collection of candles. Now, clearly, this is on the whiteboard, and I put these examples out, and they are obviously are going to work, otherwise I'll be wasting my time. I want to show you the patterns, where they are significant, and where they work. Of course, what you need to do is go onto the real price chart and look for these patterns at key levels of support and resistance to yourself to see them in the real world. And in fact, straight after this whiteboard demonstration, I'll jump onto the screens and show you an example in the Australian against the US dollar on the four hour chart, which is actually working quite well as we speak here. Right, so we start off here, market's trading up. I've drawn in, as you can see, some resistance um, um, and support levels. So we're looking for price action to respect these levels. Market here is just meandering what, uh, around, we're moving up. We now breach the level of resistance to the upside, indicated by this dotted line. Market trades up, bulls are in control, and then the sellers come in and push this market down. That's showing you that this level of resistance is being respected. That is a good indication in conjunction with the level of resistance that this market wants to trade back down. And of course, as luck would have it, it is trading back down. We're trading back down and we're coming back in now to the level of support. Level of support is broken with this bearish candle. Bears are in control, the sellers are in control. Then it hits a wave of buying. The buyers now are becoming more prevalent in the market. Demand is there, they're pushing the prices up and it completely engulfs this previous bearish candle which took us through in the first place. This is a bullish pattern at a level of um, support. So this market now looks as though it wants to trade up. Indeed, that's exactly what happens. Then we come into these candles. Remember what these are called? These are the doji candles. These are the areas of indecision. The market doesn't quite know what, is gonna, what it wants to do. If you just come into the level of resistance, we put in a couple of dojis, and then indeed we break lower to the low side of the doji, indicates that potentially the downtrend will continue. So after an area of indecision, the next candle is crucial. That shows us that the market now wants to potentially move back down, and indeed it does. Okay, so now we come back into this level of support, trades through the level of support, looks as though the bears are in control, looks as though the sellers have control, but then the wave of buying comes back in and pushes price back up for a bullish hammer, a hammer candle there, depicted by the body of the candle, the main body of the candle, being in the top third of the whole range of that candle. That's a bullish hammer at a level of support. Market now wants to move back up again, has a bit of a wobble here, market trades down, comes back down, engulfs that candle, but then trades up again. So this is now a bullish hammer with the trend. This is against the trend, you see here, trend is down, up, this is with the trend. So these hammer candles, inverted and hammer candles, can work in both directions, with and counter trend. Market moves back up again, through the level of resistance, looks as though it wants to go higher, and then this next candle completely engulfs this candle at the level of resistance, indicating that this uptrend has now come to an end and looking to move back down again. As I said, you can use these candles for levels of entry. So for example, if you're up here and you want to take this advantage, um, take this trade to the downside, you may have a stop, say, at 50% of the hammer candle, the inverted hammer candle, or you might want your stop above the high of the hammer candle. Same back down here. If you take this long trade here, you might want to stop below here. Again, defined reasons why to exit and enter the trade. Again, if you're trading these dojis, you may wish to enter the break of the dojis with a stop the other side of the doji. Same back down here with the hammer. 
you may wish to enter at the break of the hammer candle or indeed if it pulls back to 50 percent with a stop below so you can use these hammer candles as i say or these candlestick patterns as anchor points to enter and exit and so forth right we're now going to jump on to the uh, screen so i'm going to show you a live chart as of today the day of recording uh, i just looked before i came uh, into the studio here and it's the aussie against the us dollar just show it in real time but i encourage you to go and do your own analysis look at a price chart to see if indeed you can spot these patterns and how powerful they are come on let's go okay so that was a quick demonstration on the whiteboard showing you the patterns that we look for in our trading now they're very simple to spot once you know what you're looking for. I talk about these throughout my trading in the live trading room. We've got a number of strategies that are based around these candlestick patterns. So do go and check that out when you can. For now, I just want to jump onto a price chart to show you how these candlestick patterns give us early warning signs at key levels of support and resistance. Come on, let's have a look. OK, so what I've done here is drawn in some key levels of support and resistance. And I have simply highlighted the areas in green uh, where price has respected these levels, putting in one of our patterns that we've discussed. So if you look here to the left, market is moving up nicely. It breaks through this level of resistance now acting as support. And indeed, it comes back down into that level of support, puts in this bullish engulfing pattern. That's indicating that this level of previous resistance or support is going to be respected and indeed prices move back up again. And here we see now back up to this next level of resistance. It holds it for one, two, three, four, five candles and then puts in this bearish engulfer, this big bearish engulfer, which is the fifth rejection of that level of resistance. And we roll back again, back into the level of support. No real price action there up again and then back down into this level of resistance. Is the market going to continue with the trend to the downside? Looks like it. Then it has this pullback in and then it has a rejection of this old level of support. Now acting as resistance puts in this bearish engulfer indicating this wants to roll back and indeed there's quite a few pips to be had there. Finally does turn back and then back up again into this level of resistance, puts in this really powerful inverted hammer candle there. That shows you a rejection going on there. It doesn't reject it too much. It does indeed have a second attempt at that level, but then puts in the confirmation. This is the bearish engulfer engulfing the previous two candles. Following on from this candle hit, that is a good indication. And indeed, the last candle there, that last inverted hammer candle, indicates this really does want to roll back. So that's a very powerful setup there. Um, I think we took that in the room as well, actually. Um, and then that one rolls back down into the level of support. Puts in this hammer candle again, and off we go again to the upside. Back down again to the level of support. Here you'll see this little doji in here. It's a four hour doji indecision. Are we going to continue through? Is it going to bounce back up? Next candle, confirmation that we're looking to trade back up. And then it puts in this hammer candle in the direction of the previous bar indicates that this wants to roll indeed back up to the highs of resistance level. And then we have this again, really powerful inverted hammer candle, breaches through the level of resistance and closes lower. Off we go to the downside until we finally put in this bullish engulfer at the bottom, takes us up again to the resistance level. So the resistance levels and support levels have been respected. You enter when you see these candlestick patterns confirming. Here again, we've got um, we've got this pin bar rejection and then the bearish path follows on and off we roll back into support, puts in this bullish pin bar, confirmation that we want to roll back again. And indeed where we are now, this is only a few hours ago, we've got this pin bar coming in. So this is a rejection candle of this resistance zone. This is live now as we speak. I'm not sure if it's going to roll back and down and uh, and confirm that this is a rejection, but certainly this is a bearish little pattern in here at the moment. So as I say, you can use these patterns with trend, with counter trend, you can use them for entries, you can use them for exit strategy. Now we have a number of strategies that use this type of candlestick pattern formation. Uh, we look for these all day long on our live streams. We've also got some tools that actually find these patterns for you. And you can download those free of charge from the trading room. It's actually free to attend the trading room. Seven day free trial. Do click the link above should you wish to try us out. I'm sure you won't regret it when you can see the power of these. 
wouldn't it be amazing if you can accurately predict the key turning points in a market? And I showcase this every day in our live streams. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Hopefully now you can see the power behind these very simple Japanese candlestick charts. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Don't forget to leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Don't forget that little bell icon. You're going to get notified the moment I release my next video. You can follow us on Instagram in the usual way. More importantly, don't forget to follow me on Facebook. Next Monday, 2 p.m. London time, I'll be streaming to you live, interacting with you and trading the markets right in front of you, free to attend for all. Till the next video, happy trading and good luck.